Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to the Travelling Brush Tipless. It's fantastic to have you with us. We've got something a little bit different today. Here's Denise. Morning. Sharon, and we're going to have a little play today with some ink tents. And we wondered if you'd like to come along and join us and play along with us. Denise, tell us Morning, about Sharon. Tell us all about it, girl. Well, Ink Tents is a fabulous product. It's a product of Derwent. And I'm going to grab a couple of things here. Um, it is a solid block ink. Now you tell me, whilst I grab this, you tell me how, how they came to doing this. Well, Derwent were originally looking for something that would replicate the vibrancy and the excitement of Indian ink, but in a pencil and in a block. And this is why they've produced this amazing product. Here we go, look. Well, first one is the Ink Tense Blocks. Now this is the first one I ever played with. And I'll just show you the open box, trying not to tip them all out all over my desk. But these are wonderful colours. They're really easy to see what they, their colours are going to be. Um, and they're these beautiful blocks that are not when you've got your back to them, but they're quite easy to get in and out of the, the pot. You can draw with them and we'll show you lots of different things that you can do with them. So they're fabulous. And then the other thing that we have is this is the other one, which is their pencils. Now these work in a slightly different way, I understand. Well, I know they work in a slightly different way. And so we've got these beautiful pencils. So what's the main difference between the pencils and the block, Sharon? Okay, well, I would say to you that the blocks are for the more arty expression. Um, if you want to produce a picture that's freer, yes? Mm -hmm. For crafting, we'll get onto Perfect. more of that later. Yeah. Brilliant for crafting. And the pencils are for the people like me who like to twiddle and fiddle and be a bit more precise, to be honest with you. Um, but you're very, very correct there. They are, you have to be careful with how you handle them mm -hmm. because they do react differently. Um, I'm sure we'll explain all of that as we show yes. you how they work. Yes, um, that's interesting. Yes, the other thing we have. Oh, I love these. This is fantastic. It looks like a watercolour set, but it's in tense blocks in a pan, basically. Uh, so you can use them for travelling, you can use them on your days out. And I know you use them with your journaling, I believe. I your do. Travel indeed. journals. Yes, because that is so easy to carry with me. And of course, you can use it quite freely and it's clean. You know, it's, mm. a, it's a clean product to use. Um, they do two of those particular palettes. There are two sets with different colours and they've just brought out a long palette oh, okay. with all the colours, which is the complete set. I'm envious, I've only got this one. <laughs> uh -huh. I have the other right here with me. So we've got, excuse me, everybody. You have two sets of colours here. This is the first set. And that's the one I've got. So yeah, that's, that's the same one I've got. And then the second set will give you the kind of earthier colours. So put oh, them okay. together and we have this collection. Yes. Um, but as I say, the whole lot is together in one long palette. But I think, if I'm honest with you, to carry a palette like that around, for travel can be a bit of a handful, to be honest with you. That is enough, isn't it? This is convenient. And of course, people will have noticed, I'm sure, that we've got this lovely little brush inside. So there's the reservoir and mm -hmm. mine is full, wait ready and waiting. And all you've got to do is take the bung away and screw the brush. brush and you've got a lovely water brush to use. And a, quite a decent nib as well. You can get fine to quite a wide mark from that. Mine's fallen out and it's in a cupboard somewhere. <laughs> yes, 
My other has, yes. This is the one that I've kept together for just grabbing it to go out. You know. Yes, no, it, it's perfect. I've got water brushes, so you know they're very easy to throw into your into your bag and and, and take with you. So yeah. that's really, really, really good. Did you want to show us a little bit of your journaling? Oh, I'd love to. Yes. Oh, yes. Would you like to come over and have a look over on the other camera? Oh, it's it do. so posh today, isn't it? It does, and doesn't it? it Thing. today I can do that and not have to worry about a microphone around here because normally yes. when you go to put your hand on here and the TV people don't do that <laughs> yes this Absolutely. is my travel journal and you can see how easy that is to work when you're away and on holiday with grease and I've painted with my ink tents and gone in on top with a pen it makes life very very easy and then, of course, sorry, this is difficult to get around the old camera. Um, and Sivota, again, old oh, Greece, the flowers, the bougainvillea is... I adore oh, bougainvillea. Oh, isn't it? And Italy. And you see how easy... These were pencils. So I used okay. the pencils to give me the fine, fine detail, rather than having to faff about with a brush. So I just love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I think the colours are vibrant. So if you're travelling and we're talking about the med, etc., it gives you the colours you need. I think for me, one of the things that's beautiful about that is that you can dilute it down and have the really delicate washes of watercolour, but you can build up to get these really intense colours, which you can't necessarily yeah. do so easily with watercolour. Yes. Yes, and you can see here that the white stands out quite nicely. Mm, that's beautiful. You know, so that's just a Greek sunset. I did, I did a lot that holiday. Yeah, it looks like it. Yes, nice and relaxing as well when you can do the things you want to yeah. do. Yes. yes. Right, let's okay. bring you back. Go back. So I'm going to just talk you through a couple of pictures that I've got here that I've done with the ink tent. So I shall pop that up on the screen and we'll talk through a couple of things. So this painting is a sunset that I did and it is from Menorca where you know I run my painting holidays. Oh yes, that's right. Um, and the apartment that I usually stay in um, just faces the sunset and it's just glorious watching these, these sort of colours roll in of an evening. Um, and what I love about the ink tents for this is the brightness that you can get with it. Yes. And you yeah. can build up. Um, so you can do layers. And one of the things we need to tell people about the, um, the ink tents, and we'll go into more of this when we show you how it works. It is a water soluble pen, so you pencil. So you draw with it, you can then wet it and it becomes like watercolor. But once it dries, it is set. And That's we'll go right. through some of the benefits of yeah. that later. Yeah. 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 But that you know, means the other well, thing that is beautiful about this picture and about the colours that we're using or you've used, you're talking about the brightness, Denise, but you also have the most gorgeous earthy greens and browns. Mm. Yeah, they're not false that, greens, are they? That, that olive green is beautiful and complements it so well. So that the colour palette is good you know yeah. they've thought about it they, they've created colors that you can actually use yeah. and again when we get to showing you how they work you can mix and blend and all the rest of it um, but this has, has been drawn wet dried drawn wet dried so I've done two layers on this to give me this intensity of color Mm -hmm. um, and you can adjust the colour. So you put the first layer down, you think, well, actually, I want a bit more yellow in there, or I want a bit more of the peachy colours in there. So you can put the second layer, you can adjust it. Yes. Um, and when you do the second layer, it doesn't disturb the bottom layer. So that's all good. Um, I'm going to move this and show you this one. That's beautiful. I love the shadow on the trees. That's what attracted me to this view. This is... Um, in Northumberland, near where my daughter used to live. As you know, my daughter lives um, up north. Um, right. One day we were driving along and it was early in the morning and it had that kind of, the mist was just lifting, you know, but it was still quite early. Um, and we saw this hill with these trees casting all these shadows. And it was like, 
right, stop the car. And she was like, we're just going, no, stop the car, turn around. I need to go back. And, and I, I, I didn't stop long enough to sketch, unfortunately, because she was on the way somewhere. But um, I just took some photographs. Um, but that's, that's where this is from. But I love the way you can build up sort of the negative colors down here to make the grasses stand out. I've got splattering, I've got all sorts going on there. So it's a very versatile tool for, for painting. And you were talking earlier about um, the blocks being more for the big expressive areas and the pencils for the detail. Yeah. Yeah. I love having the combination of the two. So yeah. I start with the blocks, I can make some big bold marks, but then I can refine it and shade it with, with the pencils. That's so, yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. just a couple of examples of pictures that I've done with it. Well, here, Denise, we have the ink tense tin, and I just wanted to show you this quick little cheat do you see on the tin on both sides you've got these little sort of they're indents in the, the little tin. dimples aren't they yeah. little di cheek dimples That's good word and they're there quite deliberately it's not it's not there to look pretty but if you put your thumbs on the dimples fingers underneath and thumb on the dimple and press that clicks open the tin the lid just pops off isn't that just brilliant i think that, do you know, oh, do you know something i have just opened that and the smell oh i just want to put my nose in there these you, ladies and gentlemen are made with the very best quality californian cedar and there is a reason for that because when you put them into a pencil sharpener do you know the cheap pencils go when you when you mm -hmm. try and sharpen them clunk click clunk 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 these never do it these will just sharpen smoothly and that means that it keeps the points perfectly safe in my tin lid you can see that i've been through all my colors and i've done this you know me i'm a fiend for that i love doing that and that's here, a good idea well otherwise they do look a different color in it, you know, as a pencil, they look a different color. Here we have the blocks. And again, we can do the pop the tin thing. And brilliant, because with these, you can break them up. It doesn't matter. You can take them down to little pieces. And you can also buy little kind of holders for these, Denise, can't you? Little square black holders that can fit onto the end. Which They're means like comfortable thicker things, aren't they? Yeah, right down to the last nubbins, which is handy. Now, everybody, I've got to, got to, got to tell you this. This is the most important thing about ink tents. These, I can go into that and I can take water and I can throw water all over it and I'm never going to hurt it. I can paint from it and I can pick these up and I can draw with it and I can then put water on it. No issue at all. All. no problem once they're wet and then they dry when they're dry on your paper they are permanent which means you can use this for layering I like this for my backgrounds and then I'll paint over the top of it with something else maybe so that's the blocks very versatile do anything you like with the blocks everybody pencils ah 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 now the pencils we can use those and we can draw with them. And we can draw and then use water and we can spread the color. You can even take your brush and I quite like to come in there and just on the pencil, on the, on the color, lift it and paint with that. But, but if, if, you were to either dip that in your water pot, and I know some people who paint with watercolor pencils do that. If you dip that in the water pot, or if you put that in your mouth and you lick it, it won't poison you, you'll be fine. You'll have a very brightly colored tongue, but you will cause this to react and the reaction will wick all the way up the core of the pencil and you will then find that that is no longer a watercolor pencil. 
because you've effectively created that chemical reaction and when it's dried it's permanent and it will no longer move and work so very very important not to wet the core of this so that it wicks right up the pencil very important there's something else that i've just remembered sharon about the blocks Go on. Um, yeah you can also grate it can't you yes oh hang on let me get the grater out yes i think i've got one to hand i have oh i have this is the great and shake and it's really rather great because we have this little grater so you can take your color and you can grate onto here and it will give you a powder which you can then add water to or just like brush -o, you can actually shake it you can shake the powder and then use a spray and when you spray over the powder it will it doesn't move quite like brush -o, so don't get too excited but it will give you lovely texture if you're thinking about the pebbles on a beach, the pebbles on a mm. park, you know, just, and rocks and just texture. It's lovely, Denise, isn't it? It's fabulous stuff, yes, yeah. It's, it's such a versatile product. There's so many different ways in which you can use the one product. So to start off with, I'm just gonna take one of my ink tense blocks and just show you rubbing the paper with uh, the block. What I have here is I have um, some Bockingford 140 pound knot paper. So it does have a bit of a texture on the surface. So the first thing I'm gonna do is literally just drag the side of the block and you can see how well that picks up the textures of um, what's going on there. And then, Oh, what should we put over the top? Let's have a little bit of, of this one. And just overlap. So you can see how you can cover ground really, really quickly. You can draw with the edges as well, so it doesn't have to just be all on that side. So you can create all these amazing marks. And then I'm just going to take a brush just with some water in it. Wow. Look at how that colour comes together. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, and, also, wow. and also, you can see that you can just take your water and dilute that down to some beautiful, delicate colours. You don't have to do it all. You can leave gaps where you haven't painted the water on. What happens if you spray that, Denise? Uh, let's find out. So it does activate it, but it doesn't sort of but it push doesn't it down. You can if, you, if you had a huge area that you wanted to cover quickly, you yeah. could you could draw with it first, couldn't you, with the side of the um Oh, look at that. That's fantastic. Bit of you could draw with the side of the um, block, couldn't you? And then you could spray and then use a big brush, like a hake brush, to oh, get absolutely. the bridge in, couldn't you? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, oh, just yeah, that's lovely. so beautiful. Yeah. So at its very basic, most basic, that's the blocks. Yeah. Now, I tend to use the pencils in a slightly different way. So I've got my pencil here and, and I tend to use this and I layer and I shade. So if I've got something, and this is how I did the sunset that you saw, I'll start with some colors. And just keep working my way through, through different colors, layering them up. You can go one over the other mm -hmm. or you can have them next to one another. And I scribble in lots of different directions. So you scribble in different directions to get the coverage on the paper, presumably. Is that the plan? Partly, but partly because I quite like the scribbling marks because you get, okay. particularly on watercolour paper, you do get some of these marks left showing. And, I, yes. you know, that's something yeah. I think yeah. is, is really rather exciting. 
with a, a, a painting. So I'm just putting down all sorts of colours. Now, do you have a favourite colour? I love all the teal blues. One of my favourite colour, and, and this is something we do have to say, the names of the colours are amazing. Yeah. This one is an iron blue, which I think is a lovely shading colour. Mm -hmm. So let's put that through. But then you also have uh, something like this one, which is a peacock blue. And I'm very lightly putting nice. that down. Yeah. So you can see that you can spend time building these layers up to get the to get what you want. Then you can come in, move that out of the way. And look how intense yeah. that is. Yeah. But then I can blend these colours together. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so I can make these, you know, colours blend together. And you can pick colour up from one area, remove it to another. So I've got these really rather bright colours on my brush. And I can splat them over there. Oh, so I've got so my shadow of my iron grey. And I just keep washing my brush out and dabbing it on my cloth so that it stays clean. Should we have a look at this peacock blue? Yes, yes. Wow. That's lovely, isn't it? And that's absolutely lovely. And it moves quite a long way as well. So you can, you know, you can just keep blending that out to give you these really soft colours. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get the punch from the really strong colour. Oh, that's so that's nice. kind of the absolute... Hang on. So that's kind of the absolute basics of putting both the blocks and yeah. the pencils down. Yeah. Um, oh, the other thing you can do, as, as you were pointing out, with the blocks is you can take your wet brush. Yeah, I like doing that. Yeah. And just pick up and use it mm -hmm. like a water, watercolour pan, basically. Mm. Um, See, that, can, that appeals to the control freak in me. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of not knowing what's going to happen appeals to the um out of control freak in me <laughs> so again we just do a bit of that drag a few things well that's lovely isn't it yeah so you can see you can build up layers to to create what I mean I, I didn't really have any idea in mind when I did these two but it was it's just you can build up those those layers but with that again my paper and my my paint is still wet I can sort of do this with the block I don't tend to do that with the pencils it what are your you, thoughts well yeah I must admit no I I do sometimes I will go back in with a pencil on occasion but only if it's damp not soaking wet for the you know the very reason that we were earlier um, yes. if I was going to drag out like that I would perhaps make a puddle of color and then use the end of my brush okay to, so I'm not even talking about the fluffy end of the brush I might scratch out with the other end of that sort so of using that end okay. So what okay. happens if you pull that purple out into the white? Will it do it? Yes. Well, my paper, yeah, it will. My paint is drying off a bit now, but yeah. yes, it will It will yeah. pull that out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, so, that's how I like to handle it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then I let it dry and then I can layer. So in a minute, yeah. in fact, shall I show you now? Bear with me a second. Yeah. Just want to bring this piece back in. Now, don't you go messing that up because I really like that. I'm not going to touch it, but I just want to show you the <laughs> difference between one and two layers. Now, this has had two layers of colour, so you get this real intensity of colour. This piece has had one layer of colour on it, and I haven't oh, finished it yet. Yeah. So you've still got brightness, but you haven't got yeah. the intensity yeah um of this one so this this is work in progress and this has been blended and layered yeah yeah so I'm with you. that's the difference yeah so 
So what have we got here, Sharon? This looks like one of your wonderful weirdo drawings. This is one of my weirdos. Now you've seen the weirdos before, those of you who know me and who have met me and who love my strange collection. Um, I collect strange plants. I like, uh, we call them the weirdos because that's exactly what they are. And I do enjoy drawing them and painting them. Uh, it, these are a real mixture of my succulents and my cacti plants. And um, I like plants with feathers on them and what have you. But do you see the, the density, the vibrancy of the colour? It's rich and it's amazing. It's scrummy. And I thought to myself, let me just demonstrate how I would use a couple of these here to give you some clue. I'm going to come in and introduce some colour to these tips here. And my first port of call is to come in with the lighter colour that will highlight the tips of each of these. And we'll draw them in. This is the way I like to do it anyway with my uh, with my pencils and my blocks. So it does give you a lot of control, <laughs> doesn't it? Yes, and you know we're back to that old one again, aren't we? I do like <laughs> the old control. <laughs> And if I then come in, and you don't have to be too precise, everybody. So you see, I'm just scribbling the colour in. That's all I'm going to do, because once we put the water on there, we can manoeuvre it however we please. I do so like a manoeuvre. Uh, yeah, oh God, you've got to be able to manoeuvre. So that's my kind of mid-tone colour. And then I would like to come bring it down to something that's a little darker. Little little brighter look how about this and if we put them in like this to start with and that looks really nothing at all does it mm. doesn't look like very much at all but you have to I, be patient then, don't you yes this is a number two brush it's a, it's a rosemary brush sable brush and i like to start with my paler color first bring it down into the next color and look how that just wow moves. that just pops doesn't it if i do it again we'll do it with a larger area so that you can see what's happening careful careful because the colors will absolutely just run into each other they love it that i just want to clean it a little bit so i'm coming back through there but of course once it's dried if you find an area that's got uh, a color on that you don't like you can go yeah, over it. i can indeed I can. It's so like whilst it's on the paper and it's still wet, keeping my brush clean, I can manipulate that and I can move it around just like watercolour. Just like keep your brush clean. And if you skip out and you go over the lines, I always make sure that I draw my black lines around afterwards so that I can clean up after myself. So that's okay. just a little tip. Some people like to put their lines in first, but I find that if I go from light through to dark, it keeps the brush clean like that. And then go round it afterwards with your pen if you're going to outline it, because anything that's a little bit wibbly wobbly and dodgy, you can then pick up and you can just tidy it up. Now, regarding the edges and the outlines, and if I want some finesse here I, and I want it paler, I can lift from the tip of the pencil. Be careful, because as I say, that keeps it. Look how light that is. So, so now I've got total control over the depth of colour. Now that's damp there. It's not soggy wet. So I feel free to come in and that will give me the darker colour. Look at that. And then I can pull that up with my brush. But notice it doesn't move as far. Look, because it was wet and it's kind of stabilises it and holds it in the paper. So that's just worth pointing out. But if you want complete control, you can move over to, I'll put that there because you can see it then. You can move over to the pans and we can go into this and we can dip and work at leisure with this. And this, we're going to use it just as we would if we were painting with watercolour. 
Colors are the same. Um, you know, this is the same yellow that I've used here. So you'll find the same colors within the palette, but of course, not as many. So you just be aware of that. If you want to activate this lot before you start painting, you're quite able to drop water onto them like this to get them moving. Because it really does, it takes quite a bit of water, it soaks in. So go for it. These I'm going to go from the yellow to the orange. Ooh, it's a lovely. strange plant because it's going to have the different colours on it. And I can come in and I can blend that in exactly the same way that I can blend a watercolour. I mean, if anything, if you like the control, you've got more blendability with this than you have the pencils. So it's just worth noting that. So if, like me, you like the control, worth. Sharon Hurst, like your control. I'm a stinker, I know I am. I know I am. You're as bad for control as I am for just letting go. <laughs> there you go. I don't think that makes us work well together, though, because we're so actually. different in how we approach it. Yes, because we complement each other, don't we? I think. This I is my so. favorite color, this one. Oh, Denise, I love this. You've used this, haven't you? The blue? Yes. Blue. Oh, it's a lovely color. It's so rich. There you go. Look at that. Cobalt blue, that is to me. Proper. Proper cobalt blue. I just love it. But the thing about this blue in this palette is that when you first put it on, and the yellow, and this orange, these light colours, you think to yourself, and the green even, that to put them on the darks, nothing's really going to happen. You put it on, it kind of vanishes, and then you let it dry, and it all just pops. It dries, and as it dries, the colour comes back. And so you really, really can lay the light colours on top of the dark colours. And that is so exciting because it gives you this contrast, which is exquisite. It is fabulous, isn't it? Oh, I'll, wow. I'll, show, I'll show a little bit of that in a minute. Yes, please. One thing I would say about using all of these paints, um, the palette in particular, actually, when you want a lot of colour, and I did with this here and with the sky, and you're really in there with a bigger brush and you're moving it about to get plenty of color onto the picture. Down here and up here, you, can you see that texturing? Yes. It bubbles. Oh, okay. The, the paint will bubble when you really, really work into it. And when you draw the paintbrush across the picture, the bubbles stay on the painting. And where I've left them up here, they remain and they actually give you texture. Beautiful effect. Down here, I wanted them out because I wanted it smooth. So if you don't want that kind of texture, you need to work into it to, to clear it. I mean, that's all I'd say about that. Have you ever done washing up liquid in with watercolours or with these? Yes. Where yes. you just make the make it really bubbly and then lay it on your paper and just let yeah. the colours dry it's, and see what happens. So Denise is talking about this effect. Right. So okay. this is what I was talking about, Sharon, where you've created a froth and a foam with the, yeah. the washing up liquid or yes. the soaps, and then you put mix that with your colour yeah. and let it dry. Isn't that fantastic? And this particular colour here, this is done with the ink tents. Oh you, wow. Yeah, I use this for that. So you Brilliant. can see you can see the purple and um, a touch of the blue mixed together. And that that's this here. And then that's I've beautiful. gone into this one. This is just the grit. There's a black in here. So I've used that thinly. And you've really, really got to make some bubbles so that it's proud of the bowl yeah. that you're working on, haven't you? And then yeah. on top. And then there's another one here. You've actually got the bowl shape there. Look. <laughs> if you do this of course with your ink tents it means that that is now permanent and I can go into that and I can work that and nothing's going to happen to it do you know That's what I think that would make an amazing lunar surface for some of your planets and and you know, your fantasy work isn't that brilliant wouldn't it yes so there you go 
Thank you for reminding me of that, Denise, because that was um, a good call. Yeah, oh, it, just, it just what you were saying about getting it a little bit frothy, just maybe, well, why not go the whole hog? Yeah, and it works, doesn't it? Look how beautiful so that is. Yeah. Sorry, I interrupted your blues. No, no, I was just saying that I, I just adore this blue and the way it sits on top of anything here. Oh, isn't this that lovely? Is, it's stunning, isn't it? It's yeah. just ching. What I've done with this particular picture to see whether you can mix and match, the top of the picture is bog standard watercolour. Okay. And then I've gone in down here with these distant mountains and the foreground here. And the moon is, is a white. And I've gone in and I have just laid the ink tents on top. And this is ink tents through here, just this, this scream of blue. I love the blue. Oh, that is fabulous. And it just shows you how strong it is. When you're doing something with a silhouette like that, of that evening sky, the thing that you notice most when people make mistakes is that they haven't got the intensity enough in the foreground. Yes, yes. So you can really, really clout it in there with this. It yeah. works. So yeah. what you've done here absolutely shows that it doesn't have to be ink tents or watercolour. It can be the two together. Yes, yes. And, you know, if you were worried about your background moving, you could always do it the other way as well, of course. You could put mm. your ink tents on the background because then it's not going to move. It'll stay where it's put. And then you could go in and you could overpaint with your normal watercolours for stability and know that nothing's going anywhere. Oh, I, how exciting is that to be able to do that? The thing that you create mud is when you lift layers, isn't it? So with a watercolour, yes. the thing that makes mud quickest is when you're putting layers on, but you're lifting the layer from underneath. Yes. And that's when you get the mud. So yes. it's perfect. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. I mean, the other thing, Denise, of course, that we can do with our intense blocks is to paint fabric. So let me just show you how about these for a bit of excitement and unusual design. I think these are incredible. Um, I've seen these before and they just make me smile. And that but, and I've gone out in, I've been, I've used them. You can see I've used them. And realistically, you do get a little bit of bleed away because, of course, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much I needed to use here when I was colouring them in. This is blocks. I painted it with a brush with blocks and then put the detail in on top. So I've gone through. It rained. Of course it rained. <laughs> so I've got a little bit of bleed here. And I mean, I, I would I, say that shows just how much colour you can put down because yes. to me, you know, once you've been out in the rain and then they won't run a second time because you, they were no. all thoroughly wet. So maybe you just didn't quite wet them enough the first That's, time. They actually say that when you do something like this, make sure it's all activated with water to ensure yeah. that this doesn't happen. And obviously I didn't. And let me just point out, though, however, that the two caps on the two toe caps have been done with quickie pens, with sharpie oh, okay. pens. Because, of yeah. course, you know, there's um, there's no way that this would stick to rubber. It's not going to work. Yeah. So, fun. OK. So you were talking about there about putting the dark, the light colours onto a dark background. So I've got some uh, black card here. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to show you. I've already done it. I was going to do exactly the same again. But I want to show you how different it looks when it's wet to how it dries. And this is what you were saying. You, you got taken by surprise by this, didn't you? Oh, totally, totally. So, so this is me putting the blue down. And you see it looks like nothing, does it? Yeah, you can see it's there, but it's nothing to get excited about, is it? No, no. So, and I'm just to, to reiterate what I'm doing here is I'm picking these up from the, from the pan. Yeah. So we'll put that down. Oh, hold then on. I See that starting to dry already yeah Look. it's it's sinking in already so now i'm coming back in with the yellow now that's better that shows up more doesn't it it does Initially. again i'm going to drag that around because i like to oh i know <laughs> <laughs> and it is a splatter not a spatter <laughs> 
I've always called it a splatter too. I did actually see a definition. I think somebody put a definition into addicts as to what the difference was between a splatter and a spatter. Oh God. For those of you who don't know, addicts is artist demo days and it's a page on Facebook. And it, uh, Denise and I are both members. There are six of us and we all demonstrate and work together and um, hope that we're there for you to give you art encouragement. So that's Artist Demo Days on Facebook. Oh, that's, that's lovely, Denise. Isn't it just, so I'm now gonna mix the yellow and that red together. And the blue's getting there, look at the blue. Yeah, it's coming, isn't it? Just appearing out, so what's this? This is the yellow and the red? This is the yellow and the red together, oh, giving me that fabulous nice. orange. That's nice. But the reason, I did this earlier because it takes a little while, it depends on how quickly it takes to dry, but there's all blue down the middle of here. That's where it's at its wettest yeah. at the minute. Yeah. But when it dries, you get this sort of vibrancy, oh, which on a black now. background is amazing. Then you can come back in, you know, with your pencil. Yeah. So I'll try not to knock the camera there. So you can come back in with your pencil when it's dry and you can go back over. And you can see how that pencil shows up against that dark as well, because this is obviously dry at the minute. Yeah. You could then re-wet it and, and then it would dry back to this and then it's set. So um, what, can you put some water on that pencil? Let's see what that does now. Yeah, absolutely. So I just take my damp pencil and again, it's going to sort of disappear. Your damp brush, you mean? Yeah, it's just my damp brush. Nothing, yeah. no, nothing on it but water. Um, and pencil mark will disappear but it will dry back up right oh we'll have so, to look at um you know when, when we're done so that people can see the kind of dried finished result yes and the other thing i just want to briefly show you whilst i'm here is the white ink tent pencil yeah because again my blue's not fully dry here i didn't do this early enough but can you see how that coverage yeah and that's just with the dry pencil yeah isn't that amazing? And when that, I do the, the landscapes, I, I put highlights uh, with the, the pencil. Let me show you. So on this one, if I bring it yeah. in a little bit, I've used the white just to, to brighten up the top okay. of the clouds. And uh, you've wet the white, have you, to sort of blend it in? You haven't well, just worn it on. I've done both. I wet okay. it, let it dry, and then I've gone back over it with the pencil and then not wet it. And that to me gives me that double whammy. Okay, yeah, that's a good plan. That is um, white. This is the white pencil that I used for the moon in my previous picture, the Greek. Oh, wonderful. Um, sunset, yeah. Yeah. It does, oh, that's lovely. That really, really stands out, doesn't it? The blue has come to life. Yeah, look at this all coming through here. As yeah. this dries, it's getting brighter and brighter. And to have that on black paper, you'd expect these colours to show up on white paper. To have them show up like this on black paper yeah. is quite impressive. Yeah, I agree. Yes. So and in that, fact, that means, doesn't it, that if, again, if you're on holiday or you're out and about, you've even got the option now of painting at night. Because yes. to me, that says London on the Thames, you know, lights on the water at night time. Yes. Yeah, Ooh. can we, can we. Right, I need to sharpen my, my white pencil and I'm going to show you this. Yeah. So whilst I sharpen it, can you tell us about it, Sharon? Yes, of course. This is the um, Derwent Helical pencil sharpener. Helical because the blade um, it is, uh, well, well, we'll show you actually, well, I'll get to need to take it apart in a minute. But the point about this particular pencil sharpener is it sharpens to the most exquisite killer point you cannot begin to imagine. Oh, it's, you know, it's amazing. You could stab an ant with it, couldn't you? I mean, it's, yeah. so, it's I think it's one of the longest sharpeners that you that's available on the market. Look how beautiful those yeah. those marks are. But when you're uh, saying about London lights, you could join those up with with a string and have them as, oh, yes. as you know as the, along the, the, the embankment yeah. yeah and have them as oh as sort yeah of... that's a lovely idea oh now do you know you've got me going now I fancy doing that <laughs> <laughs> 
yes. Oh, um, did that trip up to London one evening, Denise? Oh, absolutely. Right, I've taken the back end of the yeah, pencil sharpener out. So instead of um, pushing the pencil up against a blade, it grinds it. So and it, it doesn't it pull it apart. Yes, yeah. So you can yeah. see that that working there. Right, let yeah. me put that back yeah. together. And if you find that um, your blades are a little bit uh, uh, dulling, um, particularly if you, they say that you can use um, pastel pencils in this particular sharpener, okay. and just sharpen up your blade again, just pop in a graphite pencil, and a graphite pencil will sharpen it up again. So now these colours have dried, Sharon, you can see just how stunning and how much they pop on the black paper. Um, so I'm, I'm delighted with, with how they work on this black paper. And I agree with you. I think we need a night out somewhere where we sit on a cafe on an embankment and just draw what we see. I'd love to do that. I'd love to do that. We'd film it and let people have a look. But oh, absolutely. Another idea here is fireworks. Perfect. Because work for fireworks on November the 5th. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I you can see how here that the, the pencil marks are still visible because yes. I only just touched them with the water. Yeah, yeah, that's really, really good, isn't it? That's well worth the, uh, the attempt. Fabulous, Denise, thank you. My pleasure, my pleasure. Let's... Right, Denise, guess, yes. what this, guess what this is? It's a fabulous painting of a pyramid, but I think you're going to tell me, looking at the side of that, tell me what that is, Sharon. Indeed, it's T-shirt. Wow. It's t and of course, you can do this with any material, any fabric. Um, you can use this here on your skirts, on your jeans, whatever you want to do. And I've just simply, this here is a simple stamp, just a rubber stamp. Okay. I've, I've used the blocks and I've put the blocks over the rubber stamp and then stamped it. And this I've drawn and I've drawn my pyramid and the tree and the birds. But this, this is really, really clever because if you use the great and shake, you know, the piece of equipment yes. you earlier on, if you use that and you grate the blocks into here, you can add water and give it a good zhuzh. And then you can put all of that color into a spray like that. And you can spray your design. Wow. So it's amazing. almost an airbrush look. Now, the only thing I will say to you, of course, more water, less color, yeah. you know, you've got to judge it and try it out for yourself to get your your colors right and your depth of color right all i'd say to you though unlike me real twit didn't think about it watch out for the sleeves <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that's rather beautiful in its own right so i've got splodgy sleeves and the other thing that's really important i did remember but a friend of mine didn't Use some cardboard, something, yes. and pop it up between the layers. You so know, you don't get a reverse image on the something. back. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, you get a very nice imprint on the back as well. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. That is stunning. I love that spray effect because you could use that on paintings as well. It just shows Absolutely. you, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Use it we as would... an airbrush. Yeah. So one of the things with that fabric that I, I've been thinking about is um, I was looking for some black and white t-shirts and t-shirts with black and white drawings on that you could then colour. Yep. So you get the drawing <laughs> is strong and you could have maybe that spritz colour, the spray colour or some very yes. blocky areas. I think it would be really good fun. That's a good idea. And of course, you, you need to use something to block out the, if you're going to do the background, you'd have to... Yeah obviously stencil the, the design yes. that you, you don't want to cover, but- um, Mask it out, yeah. You know, if you're not feeling confident about drawing, that's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah, and then, you know, it may be a t-shirt that you might see lots of people wearing or something, it's something that's really popular, but yours is gonna be unique. Just a bit different. And don't forget, if like me, you're very clever at splishing and sploshing your clothes with the paint that you're using in the acrylic, <laughs> 
and what have you. Using this particular product is a very, very good way to disguise and hide the thing that you've made a mistake with. On, I'm, I'm a monster for doing that, particularly with trousers. So I can always use my ink tents and go in there and draw. And if you want hard, sharp lines, best thing you can use is a Sharpie pen on top for definition because mm. Sharpie pens don't come out of nothing. Nothing. I've used Sharpie pens to cover up white splashes on black jeans, <laughs> but they've got to be properly black for that to work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, that's fantastic. Well, I, before we go, I just want to ask you about the beautiful lady over your shoulder, because I believe the Intense is involved there as well. Yes, I've used the ink tents for the colours in her hair. To, I wanted it to really, really be a vibrant piece. Mm. And the, the majority of it is watercolour, fair dues. But here, the oranges and the reds on the fins and the, some of the green in her hair, I've used the ink tents just because I wanted to give it a real punch. Real kick. Make well, it's it absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank pleasure. You. I think listening to how we've been talking about this, this ink tents, I think it is absolutely fair to say that we both quite enjoy it. Yeah, I like it very much. Yes, mm. I mean, hand on heart. Um, I have all the sets and I use all of the sets. It's not something that's sitting in the cupboard and um, just getting dust. It's, it's something that I have and I use. Yeah. Yeah, I love them. But I, I sometimes forget about them. So having done this has meant that I've got all sorts of ideas. <laughs> whizzing around in my head like you have when you soon you get a product oh I know what I can do with that and I know what I can do with that and I'm going to do this and I'm going to you know yeah my brain is going yeah and um, and honestly everybody out there in the future please continue to watch because Denise and I hope to get out and about and to be doing some painting and some on plein air so we'll take our intense pencils with us and we can get down to it and you can come along and join in too. So Absolutely. don't forget, come and join us next time. Um, we don't know what we're doing yet, but you'll have to wait and see. And Denise and I would very much like to invite you to please come and dip into our conversation. <laughs>